So, good morning on this Sunday, the 28th of November in 2021. Welcome to, uh, um, well, a fiddling about stream with me, Radar Rich from the Netherlands. And today <clears throat> I was thinking of using just one synthesizer. I think I will use uh, Rob Papen's BIT, Back in Time Synthesizer. And um, inside of Reaper, which is my digital audio workstation as of late, and using my uh, MIDI controller keyboard, which you see uh, on screen, at least part of it, and some hands, some ghost hands that I hired for the show. Um, because... A real hardware synthesizer, of course, has all these sliders and knobs and, and, and some have keys to play, actually, and others don't. They just have, like, sequences you can program or you can play them from external MIDI devices. That's also very cool. But the software synthesizers, like BIT, um, do offer a lot of knobs and sliders as well, uh, but they are on screen. And I know for a fact that all of Rob Papen's uh, VST plugins allow for uh, mapping the controls on your keyboard, on your physical hardware keyboard, to uh, software controls so that I can manipulate the audio, the sound design more uh, with hardware. And that's something I want to look into more and more um, because I think probably I'd rather fill my room with like hardware synthesizers but it takes a lot of money, a lot of space and also although with hardware synthesizers you can create beautiful sequences on the fly um, recording them and, and changing them later and, and editing the audio and, and adding effects uh, after the fact is tougher with hardware stuff. And I like both parts of the equation. So I am kind of, I am a programmer by heart. So I like to program my sequences and my sounds on a computer. But I have been watching uh, other YouTubers lately who are playing their, who are just jamming on some hardware synths without even recording the media and, or anything. They just do their thing for some, even for 45 minutes long, like an entire CD length of like jamming. And they can only create that uh, performance once. They do have the video and the audio of the results, but they can never edit what they did and change it, which is super cool in a way, but I'm too much of a control freak to to do that. And also I'm not nearly as talented as those musicians that can do that on the fly. So I want to practice it more. So I'm going to try to set up my controller keyboard again, which you see in the lower left corner of the stream. And also my bigger uh, piano, which is the Kurzweil PC4, which has 88 touch sensitive keys and, and everything on it. And I want to learn how to put them at work using Reaper as a kind of central send and receive station for all the MIDI commands and then learn how to make those jamming sessions on the fly using the software synthesizers I have combined with the hardware. So, okay. So I made a new track for today's stream. Um, I'm not even sure if there's going to be a lot of noise. I, I will try. But uh, first things first. Um, I have not started with a, a complete empty track in Reaper for at least two months because I set up some projects that I like the looks of and structure and uh, the synths I used in them and the mixer settings. 
and I use them as a template or I just copy them over when I create a new track and then um, work from there. But I thought it would be better now to just start from scratch so that I um, am not tempted by using things I've already done before. So um, to actually create some tunes, I think I'm going to use um, maybe Remedy, which can play some classical track parts, or I could use Scalar, which can perform, it helps me find chord progressions I like, and it can play those chords in different ways, like play only a bass sequence or play a melody sequence kind of generated with those chords so that we can uh, send those notes to uh, BIT, the Rob Papen plugin that I own. It will create sounds and then I want to have my sliders and knobs and, um, and buttons, rotating stuff and buttons, um, sent to the BIT synthesizer to change all kinds of elements of the sound design in real time and see what I can come up with. That, that's the start of a bigger project setup that I am trying to create the coming weeks to control multiple tracks with multiple synthesizers from my keyboard with the help of some software tools. So, yeah. Long story short, seven minutes into the video and uh, I haven't made any sound except my voice, which is probably a new record. Okay, the project settings. Well, we'll leave it at 120 BPM for now. I always work in 44 kilohertz. Everything is fine, I think. <laughs> okay, um, so I want to create a track with a virtual instrument. And I think, again, I think I'm going to use Scalar 2 by Plugin Boutique to start creating a chord progression we can work with because if I am busy um, binding my uh, my hardware knobs to software knobs, I won't have time to actually play the keyboard and may come up with a tune while doing all that. So I think we'll have a... Um, I think we'll have a scaler play some chords or notes or arpeggios and then I'll be doing some sound designing while we on the go. That's the, the thing. Hi, good morning, hello, 73. How are you this Sunday morning? Welcome. Maybe I should actually, um, because I usually, um, I will I will put these streams on my YouTube channel so that I can refer to them later or people might learn something. I, I should probably set up that the chat from Twitch will be visible over as an overlay on my YouTube video in the future. So that it's, uh, it's there forever for everyone to see. Oh, nice to hear you're good. Yeah, you, uh, you and I know each other for years now over Twitch, but there's not much going on, right? <laughs> I hope you do. I hope you do stuff. I I do hope, but we don't talk a lot or whatever, right? It's okay. Um, so f let's see. I'm going to find some just a piano sound for now. to actually have something we can, well, I can listen to while I am creating the chord progression.
Um, okay. I got carried away already. Maybe I want something sad, emotional. Let's see what this does. some chords together to make like a pattern that is sounding nice enough to be playing for an hour while I'm um, changing uh, sound in, in the synthesizer I'm going to use. So if I play this Yeah, I like this pattern. This is is good enough for me. So um and we can Kind we can put some in well an, an, a, an expression on top of this so yeah. Don't know if I want it that fast though. Let's say we want to start with with that. Just chord progression played with um Minor seventh chord, seventh chords. I kind of like that, and I'm going to capture the MIDI that's being generated by Scalar. So MIDI capture, and we're going to play this through once. It doesn't output sound now, but it's okay. It's still recording the notes that are being played in the in the chords. And uh, Scalar has been my go-to plug-in for uh, starting any song in the past few months because I like to actually first find beautiful chords before I uh, head into the sound design stage of a project. So now I'm going to uh, drag the notes that were generated by Scalar into my project. I don't want to start a project on the first beat. I never do. I also always want some breathing room before. So this is going to be our, um, this is the MIDI capture of Scalar. These, these are the song, uh, the notes that were played. You see them here. 
And I'm not going to do anything about them right now. This is fine. I mean, this is a piano being played, but I'm going to send these notes through a synthesizer. So Scalar will not be uh, will not be played anymore. For now, it's just here for a later reference. I'm going to mute it. It's not going to do anything. And now we have the MIDI capture of Scalar, and I'm going to send it to a, an instance of BIT, which is uh, by Rob Papen. I'm going to mention his name here in the track as well, because um, Rob Papen is... Um, I didn't know who Rob Papen was when I was a fan of uh, Nova, creating the number one hit single Aurora in the Netherlands 40 years ago, and Belgium too. And um, I didn't know who Nova were, but Rob Papen was one of the three uh, guys who created uh, two albums, I think, as Nova. And um, I am now um, also a fan of his YouTube channel and of his products, of course. I only purchased Bit. Um, I have some other plugins that I also spent money on, and I use some free synthesizers. Um, but uh, maybe in the future I can buy some more uh, Rob Papen products because uh, he, um, you will see uh, how 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 fun and how cool they are. So um, I'm going to send this note information that we have here. It's going to be on a loop, maybe for the entire stream. <laughs> oh my God, it's going to be terrible. If we don't like it, well, I'm going to make a new tune. And now I'm going to put uh, BIT, the Rob Papen plugin, on this particular track where the notes are on. And uh, that will give us this. It was on a different monitor, but so here it is. Oh, this is not the one I wanted. <laughs> this one has to go. I need the other one. Oh, this is also not the one I wanted. This needs to go. This is the one I want. <laughs> okay. So this is... Uh, the Rob Papen BIT plugin. It's um, this this um, plugin was advised to me by the Rob Papen community on Facebook um, because I was asking for a synth uh, software synthesizer, which was very useful for creating synth wave, like the '80s synth wave. I am. I was already kind of old in the eighties, let alone now. But I like the the sounds of the eighties with all the synths and the synth drums and so on. And um, uh, uh, Rob Papen has many other products which are doing the same in different ways or doing different things in the same ways. He has an entire package of of plugins which are cool. But this one is well nicely visual so it's if you start playing with it it's good to see what you're actually doing and and what is uh, influencing what and it also is made basically for those analog sounds from the 80s or before so it it did what i wanted from a synthesizer plugin and uh, it wasn't uh, too bad in price as well so i thought that was a that was a good start in my uh, synthesizer journey. And I uh, still uh, use it today. But I just have uh, others th that are competing uh, for time. <laughs> so um, so this synthesizer, of course, has many um, presets, all made by Rob and, and friends. And I don't hear anything which is wonderful. Oh, okay, I can... Sorry. A, a, a Vangelis like sound. So that's that's very Vangelis, right? And we can use a preset, or I can start making just a sound for our own fun, which is fine for me. This is a sound I actually created. There's some clicking in. Okay, I have to ask Rob or others in the community. 
what that clicking might be, but... So, um, I made a few. This is a mono, uh, monophonic synthesizer sound, which means if I press one key and I press another note, the synth will go to that note. It will not play multiple notes at the same time. Which is cool. <laughs> Oh, I like this one as well. The bees in church. I made that one myself. delay and reverb so I'm not using um, I can show you the mixer inside of the software and it's just two tracks one with the scaler which is now muted and one with BIT and there's no there are no effects on this track it's just uh, all sound is created by the synthesizer itself which is good for the idea I'm trying to make here <clears throat> so, if we start playing this track... You hear... You hear uh, a lot of uh, fantastic uh, noise. And there's that lush delay and reverb in the back. Yeah, hello, dance, dance, get off. Get off your lazy ass and, and dance, bro. <laughs> cool. Oh, I should probably uh, mention on Twitch, or not on Twitch, on Twitch, Twitch, Twitter, <laughs> that I'm streaming as well. I have a few synthesizer friends on Twitter. They might actually like this. Who knows? Just a second. I forget about these things lately because uh, I don't stream a lot anymore. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's on Twitter now. It might help wake someone up who wants to see this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> awesome. So, um... Okay, so we have the we have noise. We have enough noise. I'm gonna lower the volume of the noise. Because the noise is not the point right now. The point is I want to uh, control the noise by using the the sliders, the rotating knobs and the buttons on my uh, MIDI control keyboard. That's the whole point of today's video actually. And I've been going on for 29 minutes without doing that yet. That's me. So. Okay. I'm putting
putting the, the music volume uh, quite a few dBs lower than my voice because I still want to be able to talk and I also don't want to drive you crazy with this same uh, uh, thing all the time. And I'm going to make it a bit slower, I think. So, okay, we are in BIT. And let's create a new uh, preset. Name it after today's stream. And this is the... Clubstep! I do remember you, of course. Uh, I uh, think we met while I was streaming Mindustry. I think that was the case. You and someone else, also a Mindustry player, Mindustry, Mindustry, uh, you helped me out. I think it was you. And looking at your name, Clubstep, it might be possible that you actually also like music and sound design. <laughs> So, welcome it's on this morning. It's a rainy day in the Netherlands, so uh, the best day for creating some noise, I thought. Let me take a tiny piece of chocolate and a sip of my water. So, um, this is the default um, patch that uh, Rob Harper's BIT comes up with and now uh, it's on it's our duty to start playing with it and usually you use your mouse to to fiddle with the knobs and we're gonna do something different today I hope um, I have to make some kind of basic sound to get us started and a sine wave is fine this is a, a sine wave this is like the, the the basic of the basic of uh, synthesizers which is fine so as you can see already if i turn the feed knob i wish i should uh, install a utility that tracks my mouth with mouse with a with kind of an overlay so that you can clearly see where I move my mouse actually during streams. So many things that I have to fix. But here I'm turning the feed knob. Which is cool. You see that the uh, normal sine wave is being changed and more... Well, harmonics, so to speak, I think are being added. tune everything and whatnot. Change the symmetry of the uh, wave, which changes the actual sound as well. So um, I have to decide if I do kind of a live-ish jamming performance in the future, in the coming weeks or something, which parameters of a sound do I want to edit using my keyboard? Um, of course, I, I want to start out with with, uh, with a sound that's already interesting enough. Although starting out with this simple sine wave and then building up using knobs is also not a bad idea. Yeah, a jamming session that I have watched uh, a few of those on YouTube lately from uh, musicians who actually don't use a computer but they use some hardware synthesizers to do it and it's remarkable what they come up with and uh, but i do have like the power in in software and plugins and whatnot but i don't have that skill level at all but to get that skill level you have to of course practice and i might as well practice on stream right Nobody has to be here if they don't want to. But uh, it would be fun to have some kind of archive of me doing this for the first time and second time and the hundredth time. Okay. Um, so we have a basic sound. We can add another oscillator, another um, sound producing element sound generator 
Oh, that would be... Oh man, your ID is brilliant. Creating chat commands that are turned into MIDI commands that change the sound of the synthesizer. Hello. This is the reason why you have been a moderator of my stream for many years, because you are so creative and helpful all the time. That's a great idea. I actually need more knobs. <laughs> That's what she said. because there are so many things you can... But this is actually what those uh, hardware synthesizers guys do. They start with a, an arpeggio, like a kind of little sequence that they keep repeating for like 45 minutes or something. Um, and uh, they, then they start um, turning the knobs and pressing the knobs and sliders and they uh, built upon that one sequence or that one arpeggio to create like a 45 minute tune which sounds fantastic I love that okay I want to be able to uh, I don't know if I can even um, control whether the reverb and delay are on or off those are things I want to control but um, first let me A sound that you can hear a little bit easier because the very low frequencies are not easy to listen to on um, on a on a phone or other mobile device with the bad uh, speakers or without uh, headphones. So I bring it up to a high register to be able to cut through the stream uh, encoding. You will be sick and tired of my chord progression by the end of the stream or you run out in like 10 minutes screaming, pulling your hair out, and that's fine with me. So what do I want to be able to control? I think I have these, I have 16 uh, push buttons on my, uh, on this keyboard. Uh, they can do a lot of things. I can use them later on to switch to different uh, tracks in my uh, digital audio workstation so that they con so that suddenly all the knobs control different synthesizers and so on but I have to start somewhere and yeah playing uh, Euro Truck Simulator with uh, <laughs> with chat I um, yeah I can only I cannot even imagine what a mess that would be even when I played Euro Truck Simulator with a steering wheel it was already crazy let alone letting the the chat interact with that <laughs> So, okay, I hope Rob Papen won't disappoint me. I want to be able to do everything from MIDI controls. So, I want to turn on and off this oscillator by pressing a bouton. This button, okay, does it work? It does not work. Huh. Okay. That doesn't work. Why not? Is it still waiting? I could find out the MIDI CC code for this particular button. It doesn't see that. Will it see uh, when I do this? Let's do MIDI from 0 to 127. No, turning on and off that oscillator, the sound generator. Does not work so far. Mm. Okay, I have, I have uh, outside of the view of the camera. Hey, Seek. Good morning, Mr. Bloon. Hi, Mr. Bloon. I'm here to be with you. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Oh, and by the way, I should create a new preset. Oh, I did. I did. I did. I'm stupid. I did create a new preset. Lunchtime. Okay. Well... Seek and I uh, finally gamed together last night again after months of absence by, from me. So um, I'm really grateful. It was fun. It was a fun evening of popping balloons and screaming at bosses who will not do what we wanted to do. 
you can lurk here. The good musics, well, that's debatable, but there is musics. Okay, let me uh, clear any mini this thing was listening to, and I'm gonna try a different key on my um, on my keyboard and see if it will listen to that. No, it doesn't. Oof, oof. The other then. Let me see. Let's do MIDI. No, it also does not listen. Okay, I have found an issue here. It is, uh, this particular synthesizer is listening to uh, all the channels of MIDI that come from my Launch Key 49, which is my particular keyboard controller. Or MIDI controller. Oh, oh I have not record enabled it. So if I don't uh, arm it for uh, recording, it will not uh, register any input. I am, okay. Don't clip this, but I'm stupid. Let's to MIDI. Boom. Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, but at least I give it a chance to work now. Let's to MIDI, a different key. Yes, this works. Oh, I have to keep it pressed to stay on. What? That's not what I want. Rob! Rob, help me. <laughs> panic mode, panic mode. Let's to MIDI. But only when I press it. That's interesting. W does that work to with the button as well, by the way? No, the buttons are not picked up. Huh. Uh, <laughs> on, off. Oh, do I have to... Oh wait, if it's in the on state, will can I the, the on do I have to let the on state to something there as well? That could be. MIDI CC 112. No. No, I have to keep it pressed for it to stay on. So I cannot figure out yet. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. Maybe if I use a different key. No. It wants me to keep pressing that key to keep that oscillator from generating uh, sine waves. That's not good. That's not what I want. Um... No, that's definitely not what I want. Oh, there. That's a, that's a challenge right there. Um, wow. Um, mm, 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 let me think, let me think. Maybe I should actually change the... Um, Uh-huh, yeah, there is. I have to figure out what this is sending. So, um, I am gonna... Wait, is my... Okay. Save the project for a moment. Um, I bet there is a way to... Yeah, I'm gonna make a new track, which listens... Uh, so the synthesizer uh, will stop listening to a MIDI control now. I'm gonna make a new track which listens to my launch key, which is my controller keyboard. I'm gonna arm it for recording and I'm gonna push some buttons and see what happens. Um, okay. Um, I don't wanna do that in a loop. I just want to start at the beginning of the track and I'm gonna record some buttons. So it's recording now. So, I'm going to press this and let it go. Press this and let it go. This, 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 and this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to save this. So, although there was no sound produced, there have been messages sent. Oh, this is not a CC message. This is just a note. It outputs notes on those uh, buttons. Oh. Yeah, I... 
I'm not surprised that uh, the synthesizer is not listening to that because a note will be interpreted as a uh, as a note to play. Hmm, <laughs> that's interesting. I thought that the keyboard would output uh, control messages. So the buttons are a no go, I think. Unless I can write or use a script to turn these button presses, these notes that are being uh, sent when I press a button, when I turn these into other um, messages, because I think in Reaper you can do... The Reaper is insane. Uh, I think I can uh, add some kind of... Uh, script that changes uh, MIDI things into uh, no, no, not not this um, a, uh, uh, actions extensions. What's this? Actions? No, I don't want an action. I want a script that is notes. Well, I think I have to. Uh, I'm sure there, that's there. I'm sure there are extensions that can um, turn your uh, the things you do into something else. I even created software like that on back on in, in like 30 years ago on a on a Mac to reroute incoming MIDI to different uh, actions. Uh, but as you can see, there are like 284 things that do something with MIDI in that regard. Um, so I have to um, kind of, I have to find, convert MIDI notes to stretch markers, um, MIDI uh, remapping or something. Maybe, a, yeah, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. No, um, remap. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. A MIDI... Um, There are, I bet there are things that can do that. Because I don't think I can change what my uh, launch key is sending. That's just uh, how it is programmed. Pretty sure about that. And it has to be like a live action which uh, does its work all the time. MIDI convert to CC, that sounds like it. Like convert a MIDI note, I hope, to a CC, which is a, a MIDI control message for uh, the synthesizer. MIDI note, yeah, MIDI note. MIDI note. Um, welcome to the world of audio fiddling or actually fiddling with MIDI and making sure it does something we want to do. So basically what I uh, explained at the very beginning of the stream, uh, I watched uh, some um, very nice videos uh, about, uh, maybe I can show you a, a little part of that, what I'm actually trying to achieve. Um, I'm not sure if this audio if you yeah it will come through okay so this is uh vulcanized a guy i found like a week ago and he does stuff like this um let me see if i can can i pop out this player well this is basically what he does So he has this hardware synth, the Cork Volca FM, which is a beautiful little device. And this is what I want to do, but I cannot afford all these hardware synths. So I have to figure out how to do this with software. So you can hear him playing a, a sequence, which is just, it's a 16 uh, step sequencer. He put some notes on in it. The device keeps playing those notes. 
And he uses uh, these knobs and, and, con and rotating controls to edit uh, the sequence and the, and the sound design alive. And the only thing he uses outside of this uh, device is a guitar, um, uh, like a guitar pedal that's creating the lush uh, reverb. He works without computer. The, his videos are made, now this one is not super in quality, but his videos are made using his uh, iPhone and... Uh, so it's a, a simple setup, but he's so skilled in actually creating very lush, almost Vangelis Jean-Michel Jarre-like sequences sometimes. He changes some notes on the fly, which I don't know how to do that in uh, my digital audio workstation yet. But when he starts turning the knobs... Let me go a bit further. And he has other videos that are even way more beautiful, like some of them are just ready for CD, I told him, and it's so good. So that is that is a general ID. But uh, so I have these rotating knobs, I have sliders, but I have to figure out uh, certain of these push buttons. Yeah, I know uh, the cat. The cat is digging it. I have these push buttons, and I want to be able using the push buttons to turn uh, Reaper into a certain mode or the the synthesizer or the track I'm working with, and then adding or subtracting notes that I play on the keyboard. So I want to build a setup that does what he does and then I can start working on building the actual skill to do it. And that means that by starting with nothing, except a lot of software and a lot of computing power, uh, but in Reaper, Reaper is a, a DAW, a digital audio workstation that you can kind of customize to your needs completely. It's super editable and, and like configurable. But you have to kind of put the parts of the puzzle together in your way, in your preferred way. And you cannot even do this in other uh, DAWs because they have like a fixed structure. That you can probably make something like what he does on his channel in Logic or in, uh, or in Ableton Live and whatnot. But I um, like Reaper because it's so free that you get like a blank canvas and you can throw things on it and put them together and then using the power of, of uh, the synth by Rob Papen or other uh, developers I can I can get those sounds out that's not a problem I can recreate beautiful synth arpeggios with beautiful sounds even with this one synthesizer but the question is how to make a live jam out of it Live as in on a, a YouTube or a Twitch stream, not not live as in the real world. So uh, the MIDI note, I, I start with a tough part because actually these buttons uh, send out notes so um, uh, the synthesizer doesn't pick them up in the computer as being control messages for my audio or my synth design. But these sliders and the rotating knobs will work for sure. I, I did that yesterday already, and this will work because these are actually sending out CC, those MIDI control uh, codes that uh, the BIT synthesizer listens to. So uh, I, I could make something more useful uh, by doing what works. But of course, it's also not bad to uh, eat the frog first and then do the easier things. <laughs> And uh, but the 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 thing is, it has to be something that I can insert in the actual. Um, wait, not here. So I, we have this track with the notes on it, and BIT is playing there. But I want to put something before BIT that actually does what I want. And that's that's the thing, <laughs> and it doesn't need to be. I don't want it. 
yeah, it should, well, I, we have mini MIDI rear control. I could try to add rear control, which is by the developer. Maybe this can do it. So maybe if I put this in front of the synthesizer. And um, let's see. What, 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 what? Okay. If something comes in, I can at least show a log of what's happening. That's that's something. I hope. Yeah, this is not what I want because uh, the this is not going to work <laughs> because uh, the notes that are in the sequence that we had already and that for some reason I don't hear anymore. Why not? Why don't aren't we hearing the notes anymore? Anyways, these are all the these are MIDI uh, commands you see. So at the start of the song, there's a note on on channel one, note forty, which is like an, a note on the keyboard, velocity sixty nine. This is how hard the button is pressed, a value between uh, zero and one twenty seven. So these are all the notes that were created by Scalar earlier on in the stream, and that this uh, synthesizer should play. And I don't know why it doesn't. Right now, does it play now if I, uh, what, did I mute something? Did I mute something? I'm confused. Oh, wait, I turned off the oscillators. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, here we go. Okay, so we got our notes back. And um, the recontrol is actually then monitoring all the notes that are being played. See? These are the note on and note off messages, and that's how MIDI works. It's not, it's not hard at all. But besides being able to send note on and note off, you can also uh, do control change messages, which is the CC messages I was talking about. And what I actually want, I should probably set my keyboard to a different MIDI channel or force every incoming note to... Aha, this is what I'm gonna do. I am sending everything that comes from the keyboard to a different channel, to channel 16. Now, Usually, you will see that in the list of uh, MIDI in the log that we were having notes from channel one, which was the original channel I was playing notes on. But now this final, this this end, is using channel sixteen, and it's it's clearly uh, getting the notes in. It's playing them. Nothing changed. But now I hope I can tell this uh, recontrol uh, plugin to say that. If it's on channel 16, uh, I don't want the notes to go to um, the synth. Uh, bank program select, transpose. I don't think I can. I don't think I actually can turn them into something else. Uh -huh. The notes of channel 16. Uh, MIDI input. Disabled. I want to have MIDI input on the 16. Oh, it doesn't hear them anymore then. It's not how it works. CC enabled. There's only an on button for that. But there's not something in which I can say turn a node. I bet there's something like that. I bet there is a plugin 
to turn MIDI notes into CC messages. Reaper MIDI to CC converter. I'm looking this up now. I want to be able to send a MIDI CC to Reaper and have a plugin that changes the value of CC on fly. I have a MIDI keyboard with an expression panel. Uh, turns out I was looking for a remapper, which is probably by it. And no one knew what the hell is I doing with this matrix. So there is something like that. So let me see if I can find, maybe there's mm, map. There's no mapper inside. Just things I already have, I think. 16 pads MIDI notes map. Ooh. MIDI CC mapper. MIDI map to key. MIDI note repeater. MIDI single note map. Mm. Mapping. Channel mapper down mixer. 16 pads MIDI. What does that do? What does it do? As you can see, if I press a button, a note is being played. And this... Can I... Oh, you can map it to a different note. I should put this before the uh, synthesizer so that you can actually hear the difference. So what this does is actually, I keep playing one note, but I can map it to a different note. Reload mapping, reload now, remap active, pad one. That's not what I want, I want to input only from channel uh, 16. How can I edit the map? Maybe I can edit it inside of the code because these uh, plugins are all written in JavaScript, I believe. Slider, 16 pads, MIDI notes map. No, well, I, I'd, if it doesn't exist, I probably have to write it myself, turning a. Um, a note into a CC message. It's probably not even that hard to do in... Uh... This thing doesn't do it. Reload mapping, display numbers. But something like this uh, should work. Is there a different one that might do it? CC mapper? Controller source, no. <laughs> Now, this is um, what this does is actually taking in the mod wheel, for example, or another CC message, and uh, it can do something with it. But I don't want that. I actually want to take a note and turn it into something else. And this doesn't do it as well. This takes one note and turns it into a different note, but it, it remains a note. So, um, MIDI note to CC in Reaper. Almost everything you want in Reaper is available, by the way. And that is um, because it's uh, so, uh, it has been designed from the get go as a very open uh, digital audio workstation, uh, which and Cocos, the makers of this, uh, promote the creation of uh, of, of community um, mods, you could say. MIDI note to CC mapping tool. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not the first one who is looking for this. Or oh, this is a thing. Note Mapper is a VST plugin that allows you to map MIDI notes to either notes or to continuous controller messages. That's what I want. The free to use for non commercial. Huh. I'm going to download this. A Note Mapper is exactly what I need. And uh, forgive me. And if everyone has, uh, like, um, Run away from the stream. I, I, I can, I get it. This is only fun for me because I'm doing it and I know where I'm going and so on and so forth. So I don't expect anyone to like what I'm doing here now. But trust me, once I get this working, 
we are gonna make some nice music together <laughs> one day. Um, to install, simply copy to your VST file node mapper DLL to the VST. Okay, node mapper DLL. This is gonna be cool. If it works, it's gonna be cool. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna keep searching. Like I said, eat that frog. I'd rather do it now than be under the impression that I found a that I can do everything and then not fix this particular issue because this is actually an issue that I want to fix. Okay, so I'm gonna um, tell Reaper that I want to look at my uh, VSTs again. It will find anything new that I installed. And if I am correct, let me make this a bit bigger because I mean, looking at that empty screen is no fun, right? So now, uh, if I look at the insert, if the uh, look at this, I'm going to remove this one, but add the map, 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 MIDI, mi uh, MIDI converter, MIDI. What was the name that I MIDI converter CC? Oh, is that what? Wait, is that the thing I just downloaded? <laughs> no, Node Mapper. It's called Node Mapper. Where be my Node Mapper? <laughs> node mapper oh VST M node mapper yeah <laughs> okay it's loading it might crash my project it doesn't okay we're getting somewhere guys so um, let me yeah 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 we're getting somewhere I don't know where by the way so uh, my um, uh, let me see I am forcing let me see, UI. I am forcing, am I? Yeah, I'm forcing all the incoming notes from my um, from my keyboard, from my controller keyboard to go to channel 16. So they do not, the things I press here on the keyboard do not interfere with the MIDI notes that are already recorded on this channel. That's a good thing. So everything comes into channel 16 uh, this can then go, and the note mapper will be before BIT. Wait. Okay, so this is still our synthesizer, and it will happily, hopefully, happily play the the the, the notes we have. Hello. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it plays the notes. That's good. But now we have a note mapper. And we want to have the note mapper active on channel 16. And not on channel 1. Because channel 1 is where our notes are. We don't want to interfere with that. Channel one, channel 16 is active. Meaning if I do something on this keyboard. Templates. Audio damage tattoo. F expansion. <laughs> um... Let me see if I can see actual notes coming in. Does it? Yeah, 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 it shows. Here we go. This is important, guys. So if I press this first button here, it is mapped to uh, MIDI note 40, which is E1 on the... So we have, we have, we have found them, right? So if I press this, I want it to do something to the synthesizer. So I'm gonna say that this note, okay, I'm gonna go to the synthesizer and I'm gonna make sure that this oscillator is going to listen to a CC code. Set, uh, so to turn on this oscillator, so that we actually hear sound, I'm gonna use CC code 100. I hope that's allowed. I don't know. I don't know which codes are free and which are reserved. So now I have to tell Note Mapper that if that particular button is being pressed, uh, right? Let me save the project. If that particular button E1 is being pressed here, we want it to 
yeah, that's a good question. I should probably read the manual. Oh, CC toggle. Huh, interesting. A CC toggle. Okay, probably that's the right one. I want to send that on channel one because um, the synthesizer is listening on channel one. No, that's not true. It's listening on all channels, actually. And I wanted to send it the value zero, uh, 100. Oh, let it put it on one. I even put in the value 100. Ah, huh. still no. This should kind of do the trick. So a note is coming in. And it should, should I enable this? Skill, value, note, message. Oh, this should be turned to 100, I think. This is the actual, yeah, this is the CC message. I was looking wrong. Now it works. Or it doesn't, but <laughs> at least I'm getting there. Yes. There we go. This is my first thing, and I've been streaming for one hour and ten minutes. And now I enabled this, that I can press the button on my uh, keyboard and turn on or off the first oscillator in the synth. That's good. Let's go to the second. The second one is F1. So we're going to do a toggle on channel 1 where the synthesizer resides and make this into CC code 100. Okay, so what we do now is, uh, and actually I also need to save the preset as um, the same as my song for now, so that I know that the, the preset of the note mapper belongs to this particular instance of uh, my project. Okay, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Everyone ran off from the stream, I know, but it's fine, it's fine. I'm getting closer to what I want to do later on in the month. So now I'm gonna say, tell BIT, B-I-T, that it should um, latch this particular oscillator to uh, MIDI CC1. And what I can now do is, there we go. So I can turn on and off the second oscillator with this button. So although these usually send notes, I now tell them to send um, control messages with, with which I can control what's playing. Like this is <laughs> the basis that I wanted to, re to achieve and we did it, man, we did it. Um, okay, let's save this for now. Woohoo! And other things like notes still go through. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, the synthesizer is just listening to... Um, is listening to, yeah, hype. Well, I know it's 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 weird. I know, but this is these are little um, little steps forward towards a a possible uh, jamming stream one day, <laughs> like Christmas 2022. Does that sound reasonable to you? So I can turn on and off two oscillators. Yay! But this is a bigger success than you would think, because if I can do this, I can do a lot. <laughs> okay, so um, I did a thing. And if I can do that thing, I can do anything. Well, kind of. Um, so... Oscillator 1 is this, and I could 
By the way, I could, for example, change the volume of oscillator 1. Or something. Yeah, I could change the volume of oscillator 1. By using the knob, that's, or using the rotating thing above the on-off button. Too bad that um, this keyboard cannot be... I think I cannot control the lights from within any software. It works with Ableton Live. It is kind of... I should probably look into that as well, because I am pretty sure that turning on and off the light is just a MIDI control message as well. Yeah, exactly, Hello. That's exactly what I was thinking. I want to see the state of my things, my on and off buttons, by using lights. And these lights uh, sport multiple colors, so I could have a red light if it's off and a green light when it's on. So. I am actually thinking like you. Why not? Wait, why is that? Oh, I turned the volume down because I... Yeah, so we have the volume of that is oscillator and I can then map the volume of the second oscillator. Let's try to keep some kind of... There we go. So both uh, oscillators now have um, their volume mapped to these buttons. And look, I only have to do this once for BIT and I can copy this to other patches and it will listen to what I want to do. But of course, I want to transfer this over to other uh, synthesizers as well. So it's going to be more interesting than we know right now. But that's good enough. So we have, that, we have the sounds playing, that's good. Um, let me see um, how to control launch key lights I'm sure we can do this I mean I'm a I'm a programmer how do it uh, how can I change how do I launch key To trigger the, uh, in order to get loud feedback. Oh, in it's it's included in. Um, oh, it is media information. Yep. It is. Uh, once you can start entering media information to trigger the lights on the launch key. When entering note data, the pads will respond to note C1 to D sharp two. Channel sixteen. Oh, the, uh, depending on the media channel. Oh dear, so if I, it's super interesting, <laughs> if I manage to, um, it, so if I make something here in Note Mapper, because it can do multiple things, I believe. I managed to turn on and off the the synthesizer, but it should also send something. No, I don't think it will do that. It should some send something back to the actual keyboard, a MIDI message telling it to turn on or off a light, and also give it a certain <coughs> call. Uh -huh. Okay, I have a list here of all the messages that are being sent from the keyboard to your computer when you press them. That's something I will definitely uh, save here now in my favorites. So... Yeah. So it is... It is possible to send uh, information to that thing. So I can even probably emulate it. I'm going to make a new track. And I'm going to make a... Mm, yeah, it's input, right? It's not output. But I mean, I have output. Uh, 
where do I output this? It's going to be super tricky, I believe, but I'm sure it's possible. Uh, I'm going to have to send this to an external. So, when something, let me see, I can play on this, okay, that's the same problem I had yesterday, I'm super sorry about that, I will put a warning in the YouTube video later, that this uh, is gonna rip your ears out, I'm sorry about that. Let me see, do we have a log? Yeah, there are, is notes information incoming. Depending on the MIDI channel selected in the issue, the length of the pass will change in response to the MIDI notes recorded. So we can even make a MIDI light show. There is a programs reference guide for the log. Oh, okay, I'm gonna definitely save that one as well. Could be fun. I mean, you can have chat commands to have the lights on the keyboard flashing and whatnot. LED lighting, color lookup table. Oh, you can have, wow, there's so many colors in the thing, I didn't know. MIDI channel 16C1 Color Wow I'll, I'll figure that out later It's a very interesting uh, part of the journey That's for sure We're gonna have I'm gonna do something to Control the lights so that if we turn off, oh wait, if we turn off the oscillators, they go red or something, and if we turn them on, they go green. I, I totally agree, Hello, That's, that should be part of the journey. We're gonna do it. Okay. sliders here and I can yeah I have these sliders which I can map to things and 16 buttons it's, it should be quite a lot actually and I should probably reserve some keys on the on the keyboard as well for um, changing options inside of Reaper, inside the audio workstation itself. For example, record something or overdub MIDI over something else or replace some MIDI so that during a live jam I can press a button and that I can replace the notes that you currently hear with others or add a few to them or stuff like that. There's a lot of things that can be done. Now we have this uh, effect section, which is also, especially the delay and reverb will be, uh, must be, um, uh, must be controllable by MIDI as well, by, by my keyboard, sorry. For starters, 
Yeah, I can make at least two buttons to turn on and off the delay in the reverb and use the rotaries to um, decide how much of the of the effects is being uh, put into the mix. So that that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so we go back to Note Mapper. We got something going now. So Note D2 uh, must be a will will control whether the delay or should I? Yeah, I'm gonna. Mm, or should I do this one? This delay and no, I want to. Mm, I don't know. I, I want to put them here. I think. So this is a CC toggle again. And we're gonna make it into a, uh, a message 102. And this is also a toggle channel 1, and it's going to send out a uh, 103. So I can say that the delay can be turned on by. 102 and the reverb oh I don't see the bounce anymore sometimes it disappears uh, can be uh, 103 so now I should be able to turn on delay yeah delay went on reverb goes on so We can now, during a live jam, some strange things are happening, by the way. The volume of the, there's a bug in, in this plugin, I think, or the volume went to zero. It happened before. If I put it on 127, which you can see on the display, it should be maximum volume, but it went to zero and I had it before. Maybe it doesn't like me. Maybe it sometimes bugs out with some control message. So you can hear, here it happens again. Both volumes are going to zero. Okay. That could be because inside of the actual sequence, wow, I lose my mouse all the time as well. Oh, my pause button and play button is also not working anymore. So it's probably something after doing all this stuff. Um, okay, so at the end of the sequence, there's an, there's an all notes off message. I'm going to delete this. Could have, could be that. No, my play button is not being registered anymore. Okay. Oh, neither n none of my uh, keyboard shortcuts are working anymore. So I'm gonna restart Reaper. Luckily, this is very fast software, so I'm will be back in an iffy. Could be because of the synthesizer plugin. Could also be because okay, I don't want this um, update right now. We're back in action. It is working. Not super reliable, though. No, it's not working. Okay, I'm starting to get annoyed. Maybe you can tell. Well, next time you open BIT, it will be in the new size. It doesn't. Maybe if I unload it and do this. Nope. Reset. No. <laughs> I don't want to reset everything. That would be a shame. 
It's working now, but it super unreliable. That's the thing for sure. Okay. Let's save the project and restart the software. Don't try this with Ableton Live because you will uh, have time to make a cup of coffee. BIT, okay. We'll have to see how reliable this is. And then maybe um, log what's actually being sent over MIDI so that I can find who is my who I'm fighting right now. So you can hear the, the you can No, I have not uh, seen that before. I have had some weird issues with BIT, but also with some other VSTs that sometimes some things are being stuck, but most of the time this is all very reliable to me. So turn off the de delay. It doesn't pick it up. Now it does. Reverb, have to press twice, so... If, if it's already on and you press the on button, it doesn't seem to register right away. They work now. Okay, and the mix buttons for both the delay and the reverb, I want them to listen to the... Um, to this... And the reverb, I want the mix to listen to this. So I can set reverb and delay level in the mix on the fly. So let's hear it. Put on delay. Now you hear 100% delay. Reverb, oh. Reverb is zero and now turning it up. Now I've got a hundred percent reverb. So yeah, we're getting somewhere. I mean, it's not, it's not enough, right, for live performance, but... It's not super reliable. It doesn't register the first time you put that... You, you, if I send that uh, control message to BIT for the first time, it doesn't register. It only works the second time. And now, once it works, I think it, it keeps working. But, okay. For now, this is super cool. And we got more effect. We got phaser and flanger and chorus. They are all super important to uh, make a full and, and move moving synth sound. So, but uh, step by step. Here, it happens. It acts as a switch now on. This note. Oh, this is, of course, this is a note which is the same as one of these buttons. So I am now turning on delay and turning off delay if I press this key because this key is sending the same note as the button that controls the delay. So I cannot just, I have to stay away from the lower part of the keyboard, I think, or transpose, transpose everything up an octave or two, or down, 
so that I do not come in the range of these notes that are actually controlling the same notes as these buttons do in this in this particular uh, controller keyboard. I can play higher, but I should not get below maybe. Uh, Well, we'll see about that, but I have to get away, stay away from the lower part for now. And I can probably, I can fix it by transposing down. So this entire stuff, then if I transpose down one octave, everything shifts 12 semitones to the left. So the notes that are that I'm actually fighting with now will be removed from actually the the physical keys. So I um, I cannot suddenly um, disable oscillators or do other weird stuff by accident. So that that will help. Which also, <laughs> this it becomes even more interesting now and, and shitty, to be honest. Because the, the notes that we have, that we are playing all the time, they might actually contain these low notes that also control these, that are the same as the buttons. So it could actually be the case that we lost sound a few times because one of these notes being played is interfering. That could be the case. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. We got something working. I'm sorry for all the disappointment. <laughs> okay. Um, now this synthesizer also has an advanced page in the background. So the uh, this uh, the program to ignore can, is they come from the keyboard and only listen if they come from the buttons. Uh, I think um, because the buttons are sending notes. Um. I cannot, I don't know inside of my software whether the note comes from the button or whether it comes from a key. It's just a MIDI message saying, okay, play this note. So I cannot ignore that in the software. I might be able to program it in the keyboard itself. That could be something, but what would be best, most beneficial for me is if I could uh, make these buttons send out, not notes, but send out CC messages from the get-go. But the thing is, uh, these, buttons is these buttons are uh, mainly there to uh, play uh, drum sequences. So like boom, 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 boom. And you can, and the notes that they have uh, uh, linked to these buttons are the standard notes that you will often uh, see inside of drum computers or drum plugins. So if you press this one, you have a high chance of triggering the, 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 the kick drum or the snare or the clap or the hi-hat closed or open. And that's how they are laid out. 
So I should actually, I don't know, I have to study the manual or the programming manual to see if I can make these buttons do something else. And if not, um, I'll just have to work around it. I am using the buttons in uh, yeah in a wrong way because they are actually meant to to be tapped to to play certain things. So yeah, and that, you are correct. And for those people who don't have a keyboard with buttons, they are laid out in a way that you can play your 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 drum stuff here. So and you, I can see that I turn off delay with this, and probably this is be the reverb on and off. Yeah. So this will, one of these keys will turn off the oscillator one. Yeah, oscillator two is this, and oscillator one is this. So I can turn on and off. See. And what was the delay? This this delay. And this is reverb. So these are the functions that we mapped to the buttons earlier. Now everything is turned off. Works fantastic <laughs> if you don't have the buttons. I want these buttons to do something else. Or I could, of course, because I'm not going to lie, I have this. And I am sure I am able to find something that binds the Stream Deck keys to the things I want to do. So I could use these buttons instead of abuse these. So this is this could be part of the setup as well, the Stream Deck. And who knows? I'm going to put it more inside for me now because that's we're going to figure this out in the next stream or something. Because it's, of course, super interesting to use this as a tiny device next to my my keyboard or hanging on top of it and and programming uh, I could also maybe it's better it would be better to control the actual workstation with this so to make Reaper start recording and go back to the beginning of a loop or to um, switch tracks so that I can play a different synthesizer or record and such that's yeah that makes sense too but uh yeah we can we can do whatever we like of course i'm sure there's already a midi plugin for the stream deck and if not i can make it work in some way i'm sure <laughs> so that's our fallback uh, mechanism and to be honest if that doesn't work there are of course um you can uh, stream deck like Alternatives like literally a, a, a matrix of of four by four or eight by eight of these buttons, like Akai has these standalone rhythm machines or or whatever live performance machine. They exist and they you can configure them completely, of course, but they are a heavy investment. <laughs> and I mean, I want to see what I can do with what I have. So yeah. But yeah, of course, to do this like correctly, uh, you just buy a, 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 an Akai MPC or whatever, and then you're set. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Man, I like what we got here already. It's not bad at all. So, it would be nice if we could do something else with the oscillator. Uh, with the oscillator one, let's turn the other off. So the oscillator one is playing, we can turn it on and off. What shall we assign to the next button below? We can, what is like a, a very important function to actually uh, make a push button for. 
I wish I could make it cycle through the available waveforms, for example. But that probably requires a rotating knob or a script that says you, if you press it, it goes up one, 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 and if it's at the maximum, it goes back to the first. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be cool. I don't know yet. The lights are definitely a priority. We need to see at a glance if certain functions are on or off. That's a thing. Okay. Um, what shall I do with a drunken sailor? Filters are important. Super important in synthesis and sound design. Not only the frequencies and the resonance. But also uh, the type of, uh, but that's, that's another of those things. How do you bind this to, I don't even know if they can, if you can latch it to media, yeah, you can. But what I have to see what it actually does. What happens if I uh, use a MIDI CC message to change this value? Definitely hear how important the filter is to the the nature of the sound you're creating. So we um, we need a lot of. Yeah, I would rather... Yeah, I need way more rotating button buttons. <laughs> now, we have to work with what we have. That's important. I have to find a way to reuse... By the way, these are these buttons are actually, I think, CC messages. I have eight buttons. Usually, these are used... Usually these uh, eight sliders are used to control a mixer, which we could, but I'm only, I only want to control one synthesizer instance in this project for now. But you can also use these push buttons below to turn on and off those mixing channels. But I could see if I can bind those to turn on an oscillator, then we don't need to use the, those bigger buttons for this particular use. Mm-hmm. Um. Look, I put this one, I change this one value and the volume of the other oscillators drops to zero right off. Well, well I did not change the, the knobs here. There's something really weird going on with the synthesizer software.
weird stuff is happening. So these are all important things, parameter, parameters we want to change. Like the, the decay, sustain. The release, so how long it takes for the sound to die out. So we need a lot of, we need way more turning knobs <laughs> or I need a way I think this there is a button here that can probably I think I can change these to an extra layer by holding or pushing a button here so I have to look at the manual so that these eight knobs can turn into eight different functions when I use it in combination with something else and the same is for these the, they are button there are buttons here as well they do things <laughs> So I think I can get way more out of this launch key 49 if I really want to. And I should want to. So this amp section that you yeah, I'm pointing at the screen but you don't I don't you don't see it, but the amp the ampli, uh, amplification section has a lot of things going on which are super important for sound design. They deserve their own eight buttons, you know, because it's so important. I'm running out of buttons <laughs> already. I have to be smarter than this. Turn off the delay and reverb for now. But we have the filters, we have envelopes, which are also important and we have um, LFOs not even talking about the arpeggiator I cannot translate every knob on this screen to the actual hardware so I have to I have to decide that if I want to replicate something like the Cork Volca or the Arturio uh, MIDI, Freak, MIDI Freak I think fantastic Micro Freak sorry that's the stuff I want to replicate a bit. <laughs> I have to um, look at those machines, see what controls they actually have. That's less than what's offered here. But I know that you can press like a shift or a, a, an alt button on those machines to turn some keys or uh, knobs into some other stuff. And I don't know if this uh, controller keyboard can do that as well. It might, it might do that actually. So it would be nice if these eight rota rotators could be um, remapped to um, other parts of the synth. Oh, and the volume is gone again. It just kills the volume. The, I think the, the synthesizer does this. So BIT, I think it, or it sometimes gets input, but I know I'm not even rotating the knob. Sometimes it seems to want to go to volume zero for no reason, for me at least. I don't see the reason because I wasn't touching anything. So that's weird. Um, again, volume dropped to zero. Okay, I'm getting annoyed a bit. So, um, it probably needs some more scripts inside of Reaper or I need to program this, uh, this or another machine in a way that I can control more parameters 
without having 50 buttons in front of me or rotating knobs because I might as well then buy an external synthesizer if I want that. Um, I'm going to show you micro freak. Because let's face it, this is actually what I want to achieve. Um, so, where are we? So, uh, this is um, this is what I actually want to kind of replicate. So, this synth has uh, this is fantastic, by the way. This is a modulation um, matrix, which means which thing uh, controls what and uh, to, to to create movement and variety in your sound design and this kind of stuff can all be done inside of bit or a lot of other synthesizers bit actually calls it the modulation matrix as well so okay bye hello you are very smart to go outside instead of waiting here <laughs> thanks for being there and for some very good ideas along the way that was nice um so um so the filter type and the cutoff and resonance. I mean, I could try to replicate the main controls on this machine. So that I can kind of do some things. <laughs> so the oscillator type can be changed by a knob and the waveform, the timbre, the shape. The filter is not so hard to uh, replicate and they have an envelope. This is the amp uh, envelope for, um, but it's also, it acts also, I think a secondary function is uh, the filter envelope. So, um, and they achieve that by pressing a, an extra knob. So you can switch between um, controlling the one and the other. And that's interesting because you don't need that many knobs as you see in the software synth. And there's an ARP and sequencer inside. This makes it super fun, of course, and powerful. And the LFO, yeah, you can change the LFO shape and rate uh, or sync it to an external source. It doesn't have to be a DAW. In the case of this hardware, you can just, uh, on the back there are... Um, You can um, sync it over MIDI to other, uh, likewise, device or a computer. Um, and then it also has a, a cycling envelope, which is something that's not available inside of BIT. And I, I'm not sure even if it, if there is at all. Maybe in Falcon I can do that. So it is. See, it has, you can change octaves, but by using shift in this case, you can, uh, if you just use these buttons for the arpeggiator, you can um, change the octaves, so you can uh, you can transpose up or down, but if you press the shift button, the, the blue functions become available, so you can do something with the sequencer and change the swing of inside the sequence and change the shape of the cycling envelope stuff and so on. And also they have these buttons in which you can um, kind of yeah change also a, a, a touch ribbon that helps in, in um, recording your notes but also changing them and making patterns, randomizing them, stuff like that. It's really cool. It's a nice machine. And I don't, I don't necessarily need the machine, although it would be cool, but it's 300 euros. But something like this, like being able to control your modulation matrix on the fly would be fantastic. <laughs> but also um, just the sound itself and, and, and all the aspects that come with it. Changing LFOs on the fly. So this is just this is just the wave the wave shape actually, but not this is not the shape of the uh, the oscillator sound is being generated because that's handled here this is the actual, the actual shape of the lfo so of the 
oscillator that is modulating the sound of the main oscillator. So that's uh, really different. So it's an interesting little thing. And yeah, it's it doesn't even it doesn't entirely break the bank as well, but yeah, my bank is empty, so <laughs> okay. Um yeah, cool. So yeah, a lot of playing around, right? Not achieving much plot playing around is cool as well, as always. Okay. Quickly checking some uh, little social media thing that I need to know about right now. <laughs> How important can it be? <laughs> Okay, uh, so what with the node mapper I installed, each node can be mapped to up to three nodes or messages. So by receiving just one node in this, I can I can do up to three different actions at the, at the same time. And I can do this over 16 channels. So if I had more, if I had a few extra tracks, it doesn't have to come from outside keyboard. If I had some internal tracks running as well, where I can put certain events on, it could also modify the synthesizer that I'm playing at that moment. So it's pretty, it's pretty damn nice to do that. I think I'm as I I'm pretty sure you can build very interesting uh, utilities with a node mapper like this. So that's cool. Okay. How about I think I'm going to bind the cutoff and uh, the resonance, the ODQ of the filter. For now, I have to set something to basically. Okay. Takes an enormous long time to register, but it does work. See, it did it again. It changed the cutoff of filter one without me moving anything at all. So either that's a bug inside of BIT or there is a bug inside of this keyboard. Because it keeps fiddling with things I'm not moving at all. It doesn't listen to this right now. Oh, okay. Let me see. Uh, clear MIDI. Let me clear these four functions. And then latch them again. See, again. It's getting annoying now. It, it goes back to zero 
without me moving the, the slider. Hmm, I'm not happy with that. It kind of makes it important or impossible for me. Here, it did again. Makes it impossible for me to actually use this. I have to figure out in the logs which which does what. It is with the Q value as well. Now it uh, puts the cutoff back. So yeah, this is no fun. It does not turn on oscillator two now. No, it does not listen to... Yeah, now it does. No, it turned the filter back. Oh man, this is a mess. This is a complete mess. Yeah, and it's not working. Again. If it works, it's cool. Mm, something happened again. Oh, the queue. Yeah, this, this is a complete mess. Okay, um... Okay, this is interesting. Um, let me change uh, synthesizer for uh, just for a moment. I don't think it is the synthesizer's fault, by the way. But there's definitely... Well, oh, one of my discs went to sleep. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. You want noise? You got noise. I have no control over the mix's volume right now. Because I have no bound a key to this. I could, actually. I think. Um, let me see. Can I... I have to bind a... I could bind my master to this, I hope. So we're switching... I'm switching uh, for to uh, Vital for a moment. Metitel Vital. And let me see where I can... It's all there. Linking MIDI control track controls in Reaper. Okay. This is the easy bar. A oh, complete that's great. Anyone else not liking ads on YouTube? <laughs> Let me see if I can. Set pan for last touched MIDI channel. Yeah, it's all available, like everything. Reaper, Reaper is so highly configurable. Everything is there if you know where to look. Action list. Um, mixer. No, maybe ma can I master volume? Uh, 
MIDI track control, something like that. MIDI control, MIDI, MIDI track control. No, that's not what I want. Uh, link track volume pen controls to MIDI volume pen on channel one. Hmm, no, not right now. Okay. Anyway, um, we have Vital. I can try to say to Vital. I cannot only try. I can. I can make that happen. Of course. Uh, I have some. Okay, these are some of my presets in Vital. Maybe there's something I can do in here and to test whether it keeps track of my um, MIDI control messages. Um, oscillator 1. Turn on Oscillator 1. Can I learn a MIDI assignment for that? Yes, right off the bat. Okay. And the uh, level. Is it actually that interesting? Yeah, it is. Learn MIDI assignment. Yeah, there we go. Right off the bat. But we have to see if it keeps these settings in a stable way. So let's learn MIDI assignment to that. Yep, working. MIDI assignment to this. Button three. Not working. Oh, ah, that's good because that's a note, and I have not. Uh, I'm not uh, because a uh, vital has uh, three oscillators and a sampler. I need four buttons with level knobs if I want to control them in the same way, which is fine. We can do that. Okay, the level is there. This is the level. This is the second button. See, this is how easy, and this is how it should work. I see the same happen. Okay, Rob Papen, you can rest assured, BIT is not the problem. I saw the uh, level of oscillator 1 drop to 0 without me turning the knob. So there's something happening inside of this keyboard. That uh, makes it uh, work wrong. Which is a shame. But we got something working for now. Yeah, it happens again. So the level of oscillator 2 dropped to zero without me pushing anything. So this is to confirm that BIT is not to blame. It happens in Vital as well, which is a very different synthesizer by a different developer. And these knobs are leading their own life as well. Again, oscillator 2, you see it, the level has dropped to zero. So there's an, a bug in somewhere in this keyboard Probably. Um, well, that kind of kills my ID altogether. <laughs> because I want to control synthesizers with this and make magic happen. Um, for that to work, the controller has to work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of... Uh, I'm kind of butthurt by this. <laughs> oh. 
Wow. Okay. That being said, I think I have to um, eat lunch, regroup my thoughts, and um, yeah, rethink rethink my plan to actually create a setup with which I can do a reliable jam. I do have my Kutzweil PC4, which is brand new-ish, and it has a lot of sliders and rotating knobs as well. So I could potentially use that one. I know it will be reliable, I'm pretty sure. So that could help. And I'm not sure, maybe it's a little it's a little issue, maybe it's a little USB issue. Or I don't know. So this is the last one here today, I think. Do not forget, by the way, that this is also a fantastic synthesizer. <laughs> so yeah, I created this uh, organ in the back myself. And what I like about Vital, I think Vital is, is almost the best for streaming or creating YouTube videos because it is completely visual. It does everything to make sure that you see what's going on. So if you make a filter and change the resonance, you actually see it, which is uh, extremely useful. <laughs> so this is such a good so uh, software synthesis. You can imagine uh, changing this by media assignment is it's it's instant. So the the, the learning of the MIDI is instant in Vital. Very good, very good. But also you see that it suddenly dropped to zero, even though the slider is still up and at level 82. So I you can like the assignments work fantastically. This is this is super smooth. And like I said, everything is visual, so this is a very good synth to learn sound design with. But you need a working uh, synth, uh, a controller keyboard. <laughs> and mine is just bugging out like crazy. So uh, you can do beautiful things. And I just don't want to do this all by using the mouse. I like the power of software and the the sound quality is amazing. But I want to create I want to control it with knobs and this is not working right now. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I also appreciate the fact that almost nobody came watching because this was of course more of a technical setup session for myself. But I just like to share the experience and well, kind of talk about the adventure we're going on together. And uh, this mission is not fully accomplished. It's not all wasted, all wasted time. Because we got things working. We learned a bit about how the keyboard works or talks to the synth, to the to, to DAW and to the synth. We see that bit as well as a vital uh, work with these control messages but you also see there are uh, bugs in my system that make it unreliable to really play with 
but it's still super cool. You can even control both at the same time. I think, you know. Is this still, yeah. So now two, two synthesizer plugins are listening to the filter cutoff and the resonance of what I'm controlling here. So you can make a very, very, a very interesting setup using multiple synthesizers, whatever. But as BIT was my main synthesizer for today, I'm gonna stop the stream by letting this fade out and thanking you for your attention and your cooperation and your patience. And I hope your ears didn't drip like mine did again. Thanks. I'll be back soon if I once I've figured out what's wrong with my uh, keyboard. Okay. Bye bye. Have a great rest of your weekend. <laughs>